magical treats taste great, but justice and equality taste better. To combat hate, all ad revenue from My HP Kitchen will be donated to trans and LGBTQ charities. Thank you for supporting the kitchen and helping make the world a better place. Mischief managed. Hello, witches, wizards, and those who are yet to receive their Hogwarts school letters. Welcome back to my Harry Potter kitchen. This is the YouTube series where I'm baking my way through the Harry Potter books, creating magical recipes for each and every item of food and drink that we find inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we served up the ultimate homemade hot butterbeer recipe, then make sure you check out the link down below in the description to catch up. And if you're new to the kitchen and you want to see more, then make sure you like this video, hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. Speaking of which, it is Monday. We've got plenty more for you to try. So let's fire up that cauldron and bake some magic. <laughs> Our next recipe can also be found in Chapter 8 of The Prisoner of Azkaban, Flight of the Fat Lady, where we see Honeydukes have got a new kind of fudge. We find out later in Chapter 13 that these are in fact fudge flies. Catch them while you can! Fudge is back on the menu and we've tackled fudge a fair few times during my Harry Potter kitchen, way back in the Philosopher's Stone and in the Chamber of Secrets. Reading ahead slightly, we do see that these are fudge flies. So in today's recipe, I'm gonna show you how to create some fly-shaped fudge and I'm gonna serve them on some edible cobwebs, which makes it the perfect recipe with Halloween just around the corner. Better yet, this is a super, super easy one for you to recreate. So why don't you give it a try and let me know what you think. Making your fudge base is incredibly easy. First thing you need to do is get yourself a heavy bottom saucepan and place that on a medium heat. Add in your sugar, butter, double cream, and liquid glucose, and then stir that all through until it's melted and evenly combined. Next, you want to add in your sugar thermometer and then stir that occasionally while it heats up. We're gonna heat this all the way up to a firm ball stage, which is at 120 degrees Celsius. If you start to notice any smoke when the bubbles pop, or if the caramelization happens a little too quickly, you want to turn down that heat. It will take around five to 10 minutes overall, but it's always better to go slower and avoid ruining the whole batch. As the mixture begins to caramelize, you'll notice it thicken and go a darker shade of brown. Keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't burn, and then when it reaches temperature, turn off the heat. At this point, you can flavor your fudge with salt and vanilla extract, as well as adding in your black food coloring. Stir that through until evenly colored. To get a good level of detail in my finished fudge flies, I've gone for some silicone molds, which I can reuse again and again as we work through the batch. It did take me a little while to find them online though, so if you struggle, you can also use the method that I used last year for the jelly slugs, where you indent something into sugar to get that shape. Of course, you probably want to use some plastic flies, not real flies as that's a little unhygienic. If that is too much trouble for you as well, you can just mold these by hand, wait for the fudge to cool down so it's cool enough for you to handle and then work that into any shape you like. Whichever method you choose, they will still taste incredible. So have a play around and let me know what you think. Working as quickly as you can, you want to get yourself your molds and then sprinkle some silver luster dust into the bottom. This will give our flies that signature shiny skin effect. Spoon in some of your fudge mixture and then press it into the bottom of the mold. Scrape off the top to get it as level as you can and then leave it to one side for five minutes. At this point, it should be firm enough for you to press it out and place to one side while you repeat the process with the rest of your mixture. The fudge that you left in the pot will start to thicken as it cools down, so it's best to keep it on a very low heat if you need a bit more time. Even when it's thick, it will still be pliable enough to flatten into the moulds and then you can just wait five minutes before pressing it out. That being said, I do prefer to make this recipe in smaller batches so you can get all the way through before it gets too thick, otherwise the mixture can get a little bit grainy. Keep on going until all your mixture has been used up and you've got yourself a swarm of flies. Now you could just tuck into your fudge flies as they are, or you can pop them into some clear plastic bags, wrap them up and give them away as treats. But if you're having a spooky Halloween party, then you definitely want to follow the next step 
making these edible cobwebs only takes a few minutes using some marshmallows, but it is definitely, definitely worth it. And it will give your fudge flies an added wow factor. For the marshmallow cobwebs, place your white marshmallows into a bowl and then melt in the microwave, stirring every 10 to 15 seconds until smooth. Coat your hands using some vegetable oil or butter and then work your fingertips into the melted marshmallow. Make sure it's cool enough to handle before you stretch that over your serving board and pull it apart to make your cobweb strands. Keep on going to build up the laid effect of your cobwebs until you're happy. Once you're happy, you can allow that to cool and firm up and then all that's left to do is place your spooky fudge flies over the webs as if they're trapped and ready to be eaten. My spidey sense says, Dinner's ready. So there you have it. Our spooky twist on the classic fudge recipe is complete. Halloween is right around the corner, so it's the perfect time to give this a go. And make sure you let me know how they turn out in the comments down below. That is all for this week's recipe, but if you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. It really helps new witches and wizards find our recipes. Then hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. I'm off to finish off some more flies, but I'll see you next week.